So this is just your basic banana plant, right? So that's the basic banana plant. Yeah. Um, so the fruit, the bunch, typically mm -hmm. anywhere from 30 to 35 kilos, depending yeah. on, you know, the size of the fruit. But a banana tree trunk has one fruit per cycle. And as soon as that bunch is cut, the yeah. banana tree trunk, the stalks and the leaves actually have to be cut. It's a one deal only. Um, and the common practice throughout the world is that banana tree trunk is cut and left on the land to decompose. I'm also done with this. And that's just uh, down in the consumers. So consumers put it in the waste and yeah. it goes into the recycling system. What we do is we take the entire agri-waste, the banana tree trunks, which is anywhere up to three, four meters, can weigh anywhere up to 60, 70 kilograms with the waste. Um, we collect that from the farms. We run it through a mechanical process that's globally patented. This mechanical process has no chemicals, no additives, no binders, no reagents. It's purely uh, based on refiner technology through certain patterns that we have patented. And what that does is a couple of things. Um, first, it produces liquid organic fertilizer. That's what the liquid fertilizer looks, looks like. It looks like this. It looks like this. Does it stink? Sorry? Does it stink? Uh, ah, yeah. smell. <laughs> you want to smell? Well. It's organic, so it's, it mm. ferments over time. Oh, it's it's like beer. It's like beer, so yeah. it ferments because yeah. it's got organic yeah, compounds yeah. in there. Yeah. We extract about 80% from the weight of the agri-waste that we bring in, yeah. in liquid sap, right? The other goes to make fiber, which is this. Now, why is this important? If you shredded this normally for a banana fiber, yeah. this comes out in weak form that you can't really do much with it. But the way that we process it mechanically, we activate the hydrogen within on a cellular level, the hydrogen bind, uh, bind even further. And this allows this fiber to go in and make a pulp to produce food packaging. Yeah, sh products. Show me what you got here. So when we make a pulp, we can produce all of this from 100% banana fiber. So the eggs go in here. So the eggs, this is egg cartons, this is wine holder, divided boxes for takeaway food, plates, burger boxes, we can do cup holders, cups, any molded product using 100% banana fiber. The only other two ways you can do that is for virgin uh, fiber, is wood pulp from trees, and bagasse, which is a byproduct of sugar cane. Banana fiber now is the third option in the world. Plastics, you can do styrofoam and all of that, but yeah. we all know that's you know losing fashion and the impact on the environment is horrible. This is the banana tree, right? Correct. How much electricity does it take to turn this into this? I'm going to give you specifics. Yeah. So we had an independent study done. I'm going to give you two figures. Yeah. The independent study came and addressed from the farm to the output of the fiber and the fertilizer yeah. before we get into this the output of the fiber and fertilizer, what the carbon footprint is, and what we save on the elimination of greenhouse methane releases from decomposing waste. Yeah. Because the carbon issue here is as soon as that organic waste decomposes, it it's going methane. up into the air. Yeah. And is. methane is 28 more times more potent than CO2. Yes. And if you look at the scale of the problem, there's 1.1 billion tons of banana plantation waste around the world every year. That's just releasing that carbon just releases, into the atmosphere. No yeah. one does anything yeah, with it. Yeah. It's just left to rot. Yeah. It ends up waterways, infrastructure, uh, breeds pests, all of these kind of things. Yeah. Some farmers believe it also has nutrients, but the greenhouse emission from it is undeniable. Yeah. When we collect that and process it, the independent study, including our carbon footprint, including our energy usage, has determined that for every one kilogram of banana plantation waste we collect and process, we save the equivalent of 0 0.7 kilograms of CO2 being released. It does take an amount of power to go from this to this. 350 right? kilowatts. And that's That's how, the exact yeah, power. Yeah. Right? But the carbon footprint from all of that and the saving you get is 0.7 kilograms of CO2 equivalent for every kilogram of banana waste that you process. So instead of this sitting here and rotting, it can it's become... It's captured in here. So Can you recycle this at some point? Yeah. This is 100% yeah, biodegradable. Yeah. Depending on water moisture, it, it's uh, 7 to 10, maybe 20 days. But won't it release but, the carbon once it's once you biodegrade this? Yeah, but what's happening is consumers will take this, they'll throw it out, it goes back into the recycling system. Once it goes back into the recycling system, it gets added to recycled paper. Recycled paper is now 
five to six times, once it's recycled, the fiber disintegrates. You have to keep feeding it with virgin yeah, fiber. Yeah. This is virgin fiber. So what it actually does is it strengthens the recycling paper that's already in our waste management system. So that's what they used to do here in Egypt in ancient times. They would take the reeds and make Correct. them into papyrus. Correct. Yeah. And Egypt was the first in the world to create paper and therefore the writing on it. Hence the papyrus. So the founder, Rami Azar, is from Egyptian background. Yeah. He's uh, developed the technology in Australia and with the relationship between Australia and Egypt, uh, we, uh, we commercialize it out of Egypt with is, two factories. Is this available now? Yeah, so our food packaging, egg cartons, we produce that out of Sharia. Yeah. We've just signed with the Egyptian government to put a rotary molding line. They will also make egg cartons using our fiber. And now we're setting up a thermal molding line to do a number of different food packaging products. So there's currently two factories, one six hours south of Cairo, surrounded by banana plantations. Um, and this supports obviously the micro SMEs and the banana plantation farmers, eradicates the waste from them, cleans their land, gives them an economic value. So there's a whole bunch of properties that um, are valuable. What about places like Mexico, the Caribbean, uh, places that, that are near the United States? Three key regions, yeah. Africa, and by the way, this works on plantain which is a larger version yeah, yeah, of sure. bananas high in starch. Yeah, yeah. Um, Africa is the biggest regions. Egypt, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Congo are the biggest. Uh, That's where most of the bananas come from? That's where most of the bananas come from out of Africa. In Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand. You've got India and China are by far the biggest, yeah, yeah. right? And then Central America, you've got your Guatemala, Ecuador, Peru, Belize, and Mexico. And if you think about proximity to the US, right? Liquid organic fertilizer, fiber and food packaging products, it's a natural fit into the US market. But you're not in the US just yet. No, we're speaking to the largest independent banana growers in the world um, to set up JVs right on their plantations. And the value add is we get the waste, we give them back liquid organic fertilizer that goes into their irrigation systems. The fiber turns into food packaging product that goes for the local consumption and export markets. Oh wow, well, that's great.